Hi everyone, now I'm going to be tying this fly here. Now, uh, basically it's a request for the, the Lars May fly. Now there is a pattern online, uh, very similar, and uh, it is similar, uh, much the same fly. Now, to give you an idea, more than 20 years ago I bought these hooks just for tying this practically nymph. Now, it brings back memory to tying it, I've seen it again. Uh, so I'm quite happy to, to tie it, and I actually bought mainly the materials, I remember buying them just purposely for tying this nymph. Now, there is a slight variant of Davy Watton, uh, as large mayfly nymph. Now, as far as I remember, now I could be wrong and I apologise to Davy. Now, uh, the original one was tied mainly for the rivers, but the, I tied it for the for Loch Corrib and uh, it, it worked, so... I tied in different ways, but this is one of them, and I even tied a kind of dry version, which seemed to work really well. So uh, I used it in, for the large uh, alders that came off the same pattern, so I just made it into this. But anyway, this is the method fly I'm going to tie. And I'm going to add some weight to it. Now you can weight it in a couple of ways. I'm going to be using a lead foil. This is just a sticky back lead foil. This one's from Vineyards. Now. You need a length, right? But maybe uh, just over a about a mil and a half, two mil at the most. You can go maybe quite a wide sort of length anyway, so so you can tie this fly. So you basically trim it away, sticky back comes off. Normally, I would just over a mil is easy to work with. Now to get the shape, I'm just going to encourage the the shape of the fly. Now I start. But two thirds of the way down, I just catch the lead on and I wind up the way. I want touch and turns with it. You're all the way up towards but a couple of head lengths away, and you come back down half to halfway, which is just about there. You've got to get this. This is a measurement to where the, the body would come up to and the thorax would begin, obviously. So I should bring this round. Tied it up. I usually use the back of my nail to flatten it. Helps to build up the body, but obviously gives you weight. Now you can fish this fly without weight, so if you don't need to just build tie the nymph and allow or use a sinking line to get the, the nymph deeper. Depends on the way you want to fish it. But if you're fishing from a bank especially, or even in the river, a wee bit of weight does help to get it down and into the faster water, or if you see you're fishing from the bank, you want it to uh, get it to a certain depth. So, but it's worth having some with weight and some without, or with less even. Uh, thread I'm going to tie the fly is uh, all I've done, an 8 Now, I'm going to start at the eye, now, the waist piece I keep tight, and all I do is wind the thread. I want to cover the lead up, so the you, if you keep the, the waist piece tight, uh, that takes away the pressure from winding the thread onto the lead and then controls it as well. Now, see that's a bit at the back here. I'm just going to break off that end, but it's just a wee tad too long. See that? It's going to half turn there. I usually don't go just as far as that, but anyway, just you can break it off with the, because it's just lead, you can use the thread to break it. Now continue down to basically just the point before it goes round the bend. Now I'm going to use a natural coloured, it's a natural grey ostrich herald, or you could use even emu. Use a few fibres, something soft. Uh, I'm just going to get a couple. Of, I don't usually this, if I remember right, it was three it was used. Uh, I'm just trying to get ones that's not broken here. So bringing it out, it's enough, there's, I usually put four on, so I'm just going to bring out these ones, these are all nice, got a nice taper to it, I mean not too long, just a wee short tail, tie it at the back, you're looking probably a anything from a third of the length of the, to half the hook length, what about that? Two or three turns to catch it in. 
trim it. I'm just going to trim it to the sort of halfway mark, which is there, because this is where I kind of change colours. Use that as a guide. And we tie in, this is a small oval gold tinsel. Catch this on and try and control this fibre here. It wants to set up for some reason. Feel she turns now. I'm just going to tidy this. Yeah, there's one fibre that I just didn't want to do as it's told. So I'm going to go halfway up, say the body length. Now you get half the hook length is the body, so it's about there. And then I'm going to head up, come back down. Now I'm actually going to tie in some dyed brown, the brown ostrich hero. Scratch that in just before you get to the tail. Then I'm going to use a light, light olive dubbin. Now I'm just using some, this is a modern, modern one. Uh, this is Euro Nymph Flash dub. This is from Full Mill. Just a light olive and UV. So didn't have the UV dubbin way, way back when I first dyed this, but I'm going to add it into this flight. So we catch that at the back. And then I'm just going to encourage the taper. You want a nice taper on this fly. And it is a bulky fly, so don't be shy about putting the dubbing on. It's a big nymph. And when you bring up the ostrich hero, but I'm actually going to wind it towards myself. So about three turns or so. Maybe into the fourth here. We catch it. So to catch it, because I'm winding towards myself, I've got to come over the, the hero and then I turn onto the hook to lock it in. Trim this away. Then I'm going to get a, a length of the natural, the natural grey. Actually, be, uh, it's quite a fine. I'm going to put two on. So I've got two lengths here. Just going to catch this on. Make sure it's secure. Looking at the length. So right there, which is fine. Now for the second part of the body, I'm going to be using this this dub in here. Again, it's the Euro Nymph, this flash, the Caris, obviously Lava, uh, Cream Pearl. I know it's not named after the, the fly I'm tying, but it's, it's the colour I like. So it's a kind of tan-like colour, or a beige, sorry. So. I'm going to dub this on, it's nice and soft, the ideal type of fibre. So I'm just going to dub it on, don't be shy again, don't be shy with it. Now what I'm actually going to do is work my way to it. So for where the body is going to end, I'm going to start and work down to the first part of the body. Make sure that's down. I'm going to go back to make sure that's caught. And then I'm going to work my way up through. It basically tightens up a wee bit. And gives you a nicer, a nicer shape. I'll do it. Now I'm going to wind the herald the opposite way again. I can, these represent the gills. Uh, and there is in the mayfly plenty of movement in the body, especially because of the gills. There's about four turns here, and then I'm going to catch in again. You've got to go over it with a turn, and then a turn on the hook to lock it in. You make sure it's sitting out. You don't want it too tight. You want to bring your rib up through. One, two. Three, four, five, into the sixth turn here. I'm just going to bring it through and then practically do a straight turn at the top here. Catch it in, drawing back the fibres, make sure that's secure. Trim this away. The thorax cover, the the fly is a pheasant tail. Taking out this long fibre here. And you see the body first. I'd just like to see it. Now I like to run through with the 
the Velcro, especially on the underside. Now, you can trim the fibre to encourage these fine fibres to be just on the side, because that's where the, gill, the gills move, mainly on the side. But, the, to be honest with you, I, I like them all on. If you feel it's maybe too darn heavy, then you can always trim away, you can just come underneath and trim, take them out. But I'm going to leave them. You can, as I say, you can encourage it by just using the Velcro. And you, the dubbing will help to hold it. You can see that. It's actually doing it just now. So there's your gills on the side. Now for the thorax cover, I'm just using pheasant tail. So you want a few fibres, because it is a quite a big area you've got to cover. I'm using close to the top here. So I'm just going to trim the tips off, catch it on the top. Make sure it's secure. Just make sure that you've got it spread out here. Just using my nail. It's fine, we can, we can see what it's like. Now I can come up, I can actually work up with the dubbing. The dubbing I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use a blender, golden olive and some mask. This is hair's mask feather, uh, fiber and a bit of golden olive. It's a nice soft fiber again. You could use the same, practically the same double but dubbing, but you want it slightly darker. So and I like to work from the, this point here. Now you're a good couple of head lengths away from the eye. You just work up again, always thinking of the taper because as I say it is a it's a big big nymph. It's a big fly. And don't be shy with it, and you can bring this right up to the point where you want it to start. I suppose this way you can check your length. I usually put it to the side. Because sometimes you do tend to travel forward. It's fine. And then coming back through with the a wee bit of the dubbing and the thread will slightly tighten it up and give you a shape. Drop back but you don't want in and going forward. It's fine. So you can again you can lift out a wee touch of the dubbing, not much, there is legs on this fly, so just gonna flatten it in the top a wee bit. Now this I'm gonna be using two dyed feathers. Not that one, uh, where are we? I've got a dye golden olive. Uh, this is a uh, Chinese partridge, just using one of the large Wilmot feathers at the top here. And I'm just using these up. Uh, I'm going to cut a V into it, take away the fluff at the base, and just take out the tip of the hackle. So you've got a right and a left by your side. Make sure you watch your thread here. Just offer it down the side, not too long, just slightly by, slightly longer than the thorax. Just offer it on the side and come round with two or three turns and you should end up with something like this and I'll show you. So you fibres coming out from either side, got one heading up to the sky here but we can encourage that to come down. Now leave that at, at the moment. Now looking for a, you can either use a natural brown or this is a cinnamon dyed, this is a grey partridge feather I've dyed cinnamon. Again, you want the right and the left. Just checking it. So you just can bring it out and nick the point out. Don't need to, not too much. Cut it off or you can nip it off like I did there. So again, you've got the right and the left. Should round about the same length. Just hold it in the sides of the thorax. Just come round with two or three turns. And then encourage it to stay where you want. There we are, that's fine. Now, once you're, you're happy with the position, two or three turns, make sure it's not going to move. And then we can trim away. Now, this is the reason why I left a good couple of head lengths, because of the thorax cover and the pheasant, uh, sorry, the partridge feathers. And then just tidy this area up. Couple of fibres here coming away, so I'm just going to come underneath. 
you will get that, so I'm just encouraging them, using the thread turns to hold them back, it's fine. Then you want to come over with your thorax cover, you want to make sure it's nice and wide, it's got a nice shape. That's on the top, three or four turns. You can trim this away, tidy up. And then I'm going to finish off with a, some more of the dubbing I use in the thorax, just to get into, they've got a nice big chunky looking head, so just do a bit of dubbing. You've seen me doing this in a few times, I do this quite regular on even wet flies. I'm just making a nice shape, and then using the thread as a, like a rib, tightens up a wee bit. Anything going forward, just stroke it back. And then what we do is we get some varnish on the, the thread. And then a wet finish. One wee fibre there, we can trim that out. And there we are. And you can see the gills. I don't know if you can. Yeah. Plenty of movement in that. A lovely fly, a couple of fibres underneath here, I'm just going to take them out to help encourage that, that shape. There you go, as I say, you can trim underneath, but I, I'm, it's tempting to show you to do it, but I'm not going to do it. But uh, just leave it the way it is. If you're happy with the shape of the fly, just stick to that. So there you go, that's the large mayfly. Uh, both, as I say, you can fish this in the river as well as in the lochs. Uh, it works extremely well, uh, good fun to tie, and uh, I would certainly recommend it. So, again, thanks for watching, until next time.